All right, welcome to 6.2. Um, we are going to be looking at geometric series today. Um, but before we do, we are going to review what we did last time, which was geometric sequence. Okay, so here's the warm-up question. It says, in a finite geometric sequence, T1 is equal to 5 and T5 is 1,280. We are looking for the second term, okay, T2. So what we are going to do, um, well, let's first review the formula that we got last time. It was Tn, which is the nth term is equal to t1 times the ratio, the common ratio, to the power of m minus 1, okay? So now we do have some information here. We know t5 is 1280, so that's our tn, 1280, which is equal to t1, that is 5, times the common ratio to the power of m minus 1. Now we do know n in this case is going to be 5 because we had our t5 um, right here. Um, the front 1280 so now we can simplify this you can divide both sides by 5 you should get 256 which is equal to r to the power of 4 now from here you can take the fourth root of 256 that will give you r and in this case be careful it actually equals to both positive and negative 4 Okay, if you just put the fourth root of 256 into calculator, you only get the positive answer. But remember, it's actually both positive and negative. Therefore, T2 could be two um, different answers, depending on what the uh, common ratio is. It could be positive 20, or it could be negative 20. Okay, um, again, this is when R is 4, and this is when R equals negative 4. Okay. So that's the warm-up question. Hopefully um, that was okay for you. Um, that's what we did last time. Um, we will talk just a little bit more about sequence before we, before we move on to series. Um, there's, there are two kinds of a sequence here that we're looking at. It, one is called a convergent sequence and the other one is called a divergent sequence. Um, convergent sequence means, well, it's a sequence. It's a sequence where it is um, com where it converges. I'm just going to where it converges. It converges to a number, to a value. Divergent, well, then it means it does not converge to a value, okay? So then where it does not does not converge to a value. So what that means is um, the sequence is getting closer and closer to a, a value, but it's not reaching that value, but it's getting closer and closer. Okay, divergent, well, as long as it doesn't converge, right? It diverges, right? It gets further and further away. Okay, so here are some, some examples here. We have um, four different sequences here. We are going to figure out the common ratio and we're going to figure out if they are convergent or divergent, okay? So here's the first sequence. Our first term is 2, so I'm going to plot the point right here. Here's 2. The second point is 6. That's my second term. Third term is 18. That's right here, okay? In this case, the common ratio is 3. Again, to find the common ratio, you simply take um, the second term divided by the first term. So 6 divided by 2, that's 3. This, in this case, is divergent, okay? Because you can see the the graph or the uh, sequence is not um, training towards a point, okay? Let's see the second example here. Well, the ratio here is gonna be negative two over one, which is gonna be negative two. So now if we plot, the first term is one, so that's right here, and then negative two for the second term, four, and then negative eight, and then 16, somewhere here. So again, this case, this is also divergent, because you can see the graph is not approaching to a single um, y value, okay? Now let's look at the third example. Um, let's actually plot first, okay? So the first term is half, which is right here. Second term is a quarter, right there, eight, right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a half will be half of that. A quarter will be half of the previous half. And then there's another half, one eighth, one sixteenth, and 132nd. This, okay, this is actually convergent. You can see the graph is getting closer and closer to zero, right? So this is convergent. What is the ratio then? Well, you, again, you take a quarter divided by one half, 
the ratio here is actually one half. Okay, interesting. All right, how about the last one here? Let's plot first. Okay, so half is here. One quarter is here. Uh, sorry, negative a quarter. One eighth, negative one sixteenth, one thirty second. Okay, so this you can see the graph, although it's alternating between positive and negative sides of the y values, it is still convergent, right? It's getting closer and closer to zero. So this is still convergent. And what is the ratio here? Well, the ratio in this case, well, it's negative a quarter divided by one half. So this time the ratio is negative one half. So what do you notice? Well, if the ratio, if the absolute value of the ratio is between 0 and 1, so if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, then uh, it, it converges. And then it converges. However, if the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than 1, then it diverges. Diverges. And if the ratio, common ratio is 1, well, then it's neither converging or diver diverging because it's just constant, right? So it's not really doing anything. Okay, so that's it for the sequence. We're going to move on to series now. Is that, hopefully that was okay for you. Again, if you need some help, let me know. Um, so now we're going to be looking at geometric series. Um, so the difference between sequence and series, if you recall from Math 10, um, series is basically the sum of the sequence. So if we're looking at geometric series, that means we're looking for the sum of a geometric sequence. So that's what a geometric series is. Okay, so you're adding um, that list of numbers. So for example, 1 plus 2 plus 4, plus 8, plus 16, plus blah, blah. That would be a geometric series, okay? Sequence then is not with the, with the plus sign, it's with the comma, right? 1, comma, 2, comma, 4, comma, 8, and so on. Okay, so now let's see. Um, here um, is the uh, formula for f figuring the sum of the uh, se geometric series. Um, well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Sn is the sum of n terms. T1 is the first term. Um, R is the same thing, common ratio. And n is the uh, how many terms, or the number of terms. And again, R cannot equal to 1. Two reasons, because if R is 1, it's not really geometric, because it's a constant sequence. Also, because 1 minus 1 is 0, you can't divide it by 0. Right? So that's the formula, and we're going to use that to figure out the uh, sum. It says the first the sum of the first nine terms of the geometric series is seven nine seven hundred sixty six point five. So this is S nine uh sorry S nine that's right sum of first nine terms seven hundred sixty six point five. The common ratio is two. We're looking for the value of first term, so we're looking for T one. We do know n is also nine, right? Because it's S nine, so we know n is nine. That's all the information that we need to figure out T1. So then we just plug in the numbers. Sn is 766.5 is equal to T1, which that's what we're trying to find. 1 minus the common ratio of 2 to the power of n, which is 9, over 1 minus 2. Okay, so we can simplify this a little bit. 766.5 is equal to T1. 1 minus, that's 512 over negative 1. Okay, um, you can actually simplify this a little bit more. 1 minus 512 is negative 511. Negative 511 divided by negative 1 is positive 511. So then this equals to 511 times T1. Therefore, to solve for T1, you simply take 766.5 divided by 511, which is 1.5. There is your T1. Okay, that is the value of the first term. Okay. Um, again, really all you need to do is to uh, list out all the information and then just plug into the formula and then uh, figure out what it's asking for. Okay. Let's look at the second example here. Now it says, how many terms of the series will yield the sum of 342? So here is the uh, series. 
first term, this is t1, right? We can find a common ratio, again, taking the second term divided by the first, so common ratio is negative 2. We know the sum, Sn, is 342. The question is how many terms? So I guess we're looking for n, right? Again, you can just write down all the information from the question, and then we're going to apply this uh, or plug these numbers into the formula. I'll write that down first. Sn is equal to t1 times 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. So Sn is 342. Now we'll just plug the numbers in. t1 is 2. 1 minus the common ratio of negative 2. So be careful. Make sure you put that in bracket. And we don't know. Divided by 1 minus 2. Okay. So now we can again um, collect like, not collect like terms. Simplify this. This is 2. This is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. So then this equation becomes 342 equals negative 2 times 1 minus negative 2 to the power of n. You can divide both sides by negative 2. You should get negative 171 equals 1 minus negative 2 to the power of n. Okay, and then we can minus... Okay, this, this doesn't look right. Let me see if I made a mistake somewhere. 342, 1 minus r, common ratio, oh, it's negative 2. That's where I made a mistake. Okay, so this is 1 minus negative 2. And therefore, this is no longer 372, oh, 342, my bad. Oh, that is still, okay. I'm just going to erase this. It is still 342. But now this is 2 over, 2 over 3. It's no longer negative. 2 over 3. Okay, so now to solve for n, we need to get rid of this 2 over 3 first. We can divide both sides by 2 over 3, or it's the same thing as 342 times 3 and then divided by 2. Okay, so 342 times 3 and divided by 2. I'm going to put that into calculator. You should get 513. And that's going to equal to 1 minus negative 2 to the power of n. Minus 1 on both sides, you got 512 is equal to negative of negative 2 to the power of n. Now I can move the negative sign to the left, so I got negative 512 is equal to negative 2 to the power of n. So now you need to think about, so again, this, you cannot quite, we don't know how to solve this yet, okay? We will learn how to solve this kind of equation in our next unit. Um, but for this unit, all the exponents are going to be whole numbers, so then we can really just guess and check. Negative 2 to the power of 9 is negative 5, 12. So n is equal to 9. So the sum of, so if you write out this series, um, if you write the 9 terms, the first 9 terms, then you'll get the sum of 342. Okay, so that's the second example. We are now going to look at the third example. Now this is something different. Okay, this is called a sigma notation. Okay, this symbol right here, this is a sigma notation. It's not written like that. Um, unfortunately, word doesn't show it like this. Okay, but this is what it should look like. Um, k equals to 1 is on the bottom of the sigma symbol. And n is on the top. We have the negative 2 here, and then we have 3 to the power of k minus 1. Okay, so how this works is that this is a geometric series, and this goes from the very first term, k equals to 1. So k starts with 1. So here we're going to start k with 1. And it will go all the way to this terminating, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, term, that's the last term. Okay, n will be the last term. So if k is 1 and n is, in this case, uh, in this case it's going to be 4 because we're looking, writing out the first four terms. So really what we're doing is this. This is what we're doing. Okay, k goes from 1 to 4 because if k starts 1 with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, if we end with 4, then that's 4 numbers, right? So that's the first 4 terms. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We can expand this. This is going to be negative 2 times 3 to the power of 1 minus 1. That's the first term when k equals to 1, plus the second term, which will be when k is equal to 2. Okay, plus, I'll put all these in brackets, plus um, negative 2. Now k is equal to 3, so 3 minus 1, oops, that bracket needs to be a little bit bigger, plus the last term, which would be the fourth term, and that's going to be when k is equal to 4. Now, notice, or you know, 
watch out for this. K does not always have to equal to 1. Okay, you can start K with 2. You can start your K with 10. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, but you just got to be careful from K being 1 here. If you want it to be 4 terms, then it has to be 4. Now we can expand this. Um, 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. So that's negative 2. Plus, this is going to be 3 to the power of 1, which is 3 times negative 2. That's negative 6. Plus, 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Plus, last term is going to be 3 cubed, which is 27, times negative 2 is negative 54. Okay, notice how negative 2, that's our first term, happened here, right? You, you see that's, that's what that term is. And notice that the common ratio here is 3, which is this number right here. I mean, this kind of makes sense because if, if you look at the form of this sigma notation right here, isn't this geometric sequence formula? Isn't this T1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1, right? Be careful, though, it's not always written in this geometric um, sequence formula. So you, you should always write down the first few terms to determine what's the common ratio and what's the first term, okay? This is not always the first term, and that's not always the common ratio, okay? All right, let's look at part B. It says determine the sum of the series if the last term was negative 4,374. So now we need to figure out, well, we do know now that T1 is negative 2 and the common ratio is um, 3. And we also know the last term was negative 4,374. Uh, so that's our Tn, right? That's our Tn because that's the last term. That's not a sum, okay? Be careful, that, that was only the last term. So that was Tn. Four. We know T1 is negative 2. We know the common ratio is 3. We don't know how many terms there are, though. right? Because if you want to find a sum, recall to find a sum, you need to use T1 times 1 minus common ratio to the power of n. You need to know what the value of n is. Okay, so um, that's what we need to do first. Use this formula to find n. Okay, so recall the formula. Tn was equal to T1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. So negative 4,374 should equal to negative 2 times 3 to the power of n minus 1. You can divide both sides by negative 2. You should get 2187, which is 3 to the power of n minus 1. Again, this for now, you need to guess and check. 3 to what power gives you 2187? I believe it's 3 to the power of 7, but I'm just going to check. Yes. So 3 to the power of 7 gives you 21. 187. So n minus 1 has to equal to uh, 7. And therefore n is equal to 8. Right? Because 8 minus 1 is 7. And 3 to the power of 7 is 2187. So now we know n is 8. We then can take all these information along with 8 and plug in here to find a sum. Okay? Sn is equal to t1, which is still negative 2, that doesn't change. 1 minus common ratio, which is still 3, that doesn't change. Now n, which is solved, it's 8, 1 minus the common ratio of negative 3. We can now put this into calculator. Well, okay, I guess we can simplify this a little bit first. That's negative 2. This is also negative 2. So really, they just cancel out. So Sn really is just equal to 1 minus 3 to the power of 8. Now we put this into a calculator. This is going to be negative 6,550. Okay, that would be the sum of the series if the last term was negative 4,374. Okay, um, yeah, that's the uh, sigma notation. Uh, make sure you write down the first few terms to figure out the common ratio. Um, yeah, and then from there you can solve. Okay, last example, which is the bouncing ball question. Okay, this is a very common problem that you'll see. Um, I would suggest you to always draw out the diagram because it really, really helps, okay? So here it says, a ball is dropped from a height of 100 meters and bounces back to 40% of its previous height. Okay, so here is the ball. Initially, it drops 100 meters. Okay, I don't know, 100 meters is kind of tall. It's from a very high, right? It's from a high building, I suppose. Um, it bounced back to 40% per per of its previous height, so then now it's only 40, okay? And it's going to drop again and then bounce back again. 
and then it's going to drop again and so on. Okay, it says find the height of the ball after it hits the floor for the fourth time. Okay, so be careful. Uh, we are, we want to find the height uh, of the ball, you know, after and then it bounced back, right? So we want to figure out how high it gets after it bounced for the fourth time. So this would be the height that it goes up to after it bounced the floor for the first time. So this is actually our T1, right? Because that's the first term. The height is 40. That's after it bounced the, you know, after the ball bounced on the ground for the first time. It bounced up to 40 meters. So that's our T1. So this is T2, and then T3, and then T4, right? So this is T4, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now we can, well, I guess we're not looking for the total distance traveled, so we're only looking for the height for that bound. So we're not looking for Sn, we're looking for Tn. Tn is equal to T1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. T1, in this case, be careful, it's not 100, it's 40, right? Because that's our first term. Common ratio, okay, so because it only bounced back to 40% uh, to of its previous height, so the common ratio is 0 0.4. To the power of n minus 1, well, we're looking for t4, right? So n is 4, so 4 minus 1. Uh, put it into calculator. 0.4 to the power of 3 times 40. This is 2.56 meters. Okay, so after 4 bounces, the height that it goes up to for the ball, it's going to be only 2.56 meters. Okay. How about part B? It says find the total vertical distance traveled by the ball when it contacts the floor for the fifth time. So similarly, what you need to do, you, you know, first is to draw the diagram. So I'll do it again. Here is the drop. Now it says after it contacts the floor for the fifth time. Okay, so then it's not bouncing back anymore. So this actually is our T1. And then here's our T2, T3, and so on. Okay. Uh, of course, I mean, you don't have to draw them all, but the representation will be good. Um, this is 100. Okay, now this is T1, so T2, T3, uh, fine, I'll draw it out. So this is our T5 right here. Now, because we're looking for the vertical distance traveled, okay, so notice how every single bounce, there are two arrows of the same height except the very first one okay except the very first one so what i'm gonna do is i will kind of uh, you know uh, yeah okay that's fine I, I will just count the arrow that's going down first okay so I'll, I'll do that first so then that's my t1 so now because we're looking for the total distance travel now so we're looking for sn we're looking for the sum t1 is 100 one minus again the common ratio is 0 0.4 and it's going to be five divided by 1 minus the common ratio of 0.4. So now I put this into calcul. Oh, sorry. N is 5, I said, but I put N there. Okay, so now we can put this into calculator. Uh, 0 0.4 to the power of 5, 1 minus that, times 100, divided, divided by 0 0.6. This is 164. Point nine six meters. Okay. Now what I can do is I'm gonna assume. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, a little trick, little trick right here. I'm gonna assume that there is a, you know, arrow there as well. Okay. I know it doesn't exist, but if I do that, if I assume there is that right, that arrow going up, if that exists, then what I can do is I simply take the answer that I got. I can simply double it, right? Because again, each arrow there is its duplicate going the other direction. So I can actually just double it. However, it actually does not exist. So once after I double them, I need to now take away the 100 meters that you know didn't really exist. Okay. So again, the 164.96 they were just the downward actions. Okay, they are these arrows. Okay, they are these arrows. And because for each of the downward arrow, there is the upward arrow, so now I can double it. Except the very first one that actually does not have that upward arrow, so now I need to subtract 100. So 
this would be your final answer actually so let's see what this is times 2 minus 100 this is going to be 229.92 229.92 meters and that would be your very very final answer okay that's the total distance traveled by the ball um, when it contacts the floor for the fifth time okay so that is all for this lesson um, if you need some help let me know or maybe if there was something that's not clear to you you can uh, watch it again okay uh, otherwise good luck with your questions